My name is Gogo LS86, uh, the young Aboriginal AB the legend asked me to do this video talking about the Aboriginal history of Haiti. So I'm like, you know what? Why not? I'll do it. It's something I feel more of us need to talk about. And the more we talk about it, the more we'll find out. Because right now everyone's too scary to talk about shit. But fuck it, the information's out there anyway, so why can't we talk about it? All right. I'll start at the very top because especially if you're black, they want to separate you from the original history of the island. And the thing about Haiti is it's always, from the, from the start, it's always been kind of a thorn in the European power's side. It's always started that way. It's like that now. That's why it's being financially crippled. See, when Columbus got to Haiti, that's when basically everything popped off. They got to they got to the island and they saw everything was was fruitful. Everything they had vegetation, they had lots of people, they had a lot of resources that the Spanish felt that they could use. So they immediately set up to like conquer and enslave the people of the island. Now, they want to tell you all the time that these people were peaceful, that these people were soft. While these people were kind people in their hearts, they were peaceful people. They also had. They had a warlike side to them. Not, there's no people on this planet that's all nice and goody goody. If you push someone far enough, they're always gonna fight back. So, but let me push it back further than that. I'm gonna reference um, the Atlantic Journal and Friend of Knowledge by C.S. Rafaniske, where he talks about the Caracol of Haiti, which was one of two Aboriginal groups. In that book, he references the Caracol of Haiti as Negro Aboriginal types, black, um, or also beast, men, beast of men, or however he pronounced it. And another book, The Annals of Haiti, he goes into further detail by the same author, C.S. Rafaniske, The Annals of Haiti, he goes into further detail about the Caracols. The Caracol were a group of Asiatic black people who had moved to the island and set up shop there. They had started a society like all people do, but what happened is they started taking on wives of other nations. That's why they referred to them as beasts because these people had standards. You couldn't just take a woman of another nation and your people not say nothing. Which is like today, you know, where, you know, both brothers and sisters do the same thing. They take women and men of other nations. I ain't got nothing against that. But a lot of times they like to turn around and use that as an excuse to talk shit about where they came from. That isn't cool either. But that's beyond the point. The Caracol did so much mixing that their kids became the working class of the island. Once again, the um, book is called The Annals of Haiti. Do not take my word for it. Look it up for yourself. Um, they did so much mixing that the kids became the working class, the former class of this island. Uh, and when the Spanish came over, this is where the people were. This is who the Spanish were, were dealing with more mainly. Um, the Spanish came over and they immediately set about raping, pillaging, and killing. Um, they started with the colony that Columbus left behind, La Navidad, but that settlement was burned down. There's different accounts as to why, but I just think maybe the Spaniards couldn't keep their hands to themselves and probably couldn't act right, and the people got pissed off and got rid of them. That's how it goes sometimes. Um, but anyways, after the settlement La Navidad, they still went about enslaving, raping, pillaging, all the bad habits that they had in Europe they were bringing over to the Americas. When they were going through raping and pillaging, many of the leaders, many of the indigenous leaders would not tolerate it. They liked, once again, they liked to say these people were peaceful and nice and they killed themselves rather than to deal with the Spanish. This was not true. These people were extremely rebellious, rebellious, as with the case of one of the first rebellions out there, the rebellion of Hatue. The rebellion of Hatue started in Haiti. Hatue was a cacique who was in one of the regions of Haiti, who was attacked by the Spanish. They did so much killing and raping that Hatue set out a campaign of guerrilla warfare and started fighting the Spanish. He was pushed out of Haiti, so he grabbed as many as he could and left uh, Cuba. When he got to Cuba, he immediately set about talking to the people there. He, he gave them a warning. He told them what was coming. He told them they cared for nothing but the same shit they care about now, gold, money, and they don't really care about human life. A few fought with Hatue, but many didn't. And they felt the oppression under the boot of the Spanish, just like pretty much everyone else. 
Uh, Hathaway fought the best he could. He took down many Spanish, but he was eventually captured. One of the uh, more memorable stories told by De La Casas, you can look up this story just about anywhere. Look up the story of Hathaway, especially if you're Haitian. This is your history. So you should actively be reading it. Don't let people try to separate you from the history talking about some, oh, you're African, that history has nothing. No, it's all your history. One of the historical accounts set aside by De Las Casas was when they attempted to baptize Hatue. They captured Hatue, and a priest came to Hatue, and he told him, Hatue, you're a sinner. You must repent. Hatue didn't understand this because their concept of religion was very different than our concepts of religion today. Um, he explained to he explained to Hatsue that if he died without becoming baptized, he would burn in the fires of hell for all of eternity. And Hatsue asked them.